Hello and welcome to this Applied Energistic 2 tutorial in which we're going to be looking at how, how to make P2P tunnels and how to use them and also how to make singularities and entangle singularities and then we're going to use those to see how the quantum make tunneling works. As always likes and comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks. To start off with we're going to look at the P2P tunnel. P2P tunnel looks a bit like this. You've got a flat side to it and you have a side where the, your fluid cable connects into. And if we hover over it you can see it says the device offline. That's mainly because it has no power and also because it requires a channel. I'm just going to quickly look at the recipe for this. Kind of expensive with an engineering process of 3 and 3 fluid crystals and you are going to need at least two of these to get going. start off with we're going to look at the P2P tunnel. P2P tunnel looks a bit like this. You've got a flat side to it and you have a side where the, your fluid cable connects into. And if we hover over it you can see it says the device offline. That's mainly because it has no power and also because it requires a channel. I'm just going to quickly look at the recipe for this. Kind of expensive with an engineering process of 3 and 3 fluid crystals and you are going to need at least two of these to get going. In a basic explanation, there's sort of like an input to this, which is its flat side. This is where you're going to probably attach your dense cable which is running from your controller, for example, and then the output in which the data is going to be passed along, along this side that shows you that the device is online. Eventually, you're going to want to put another P2P tunnel on the other end of this, like so, and this will then be where your output will be, where you can connect it up to all your devices. So next thing we need to try and work out is how do they work? Well, I've been trying to think of an analogy and the best I can think of is right now you're watching this video and you're using your PC and it's going and you're typing in YouTube in this video and then you're searching and it's going down a cable to another lo um, location where all the data is stored and then you're watching it from there. So this is sort of how a P2P tunnel works. You'd have your control at one end get into a P2P and then down the glass cable to another to where say your um, ME storage cells might be. So a quick visual of this is this little setup here. Obviously it's a bit incomplete and this you wouldn't ever use this in, in the game because it's, it's just pointless. So you've got your ME drive over here and this is connected to dense cables and it's going to a PTP and it's running along the glass cable and out now again. So here you might have your power source and your ME controller and your terminals. And then this will allow you up to 32 channels. Obviously your glass cable can only allow 8 and it's going back out into another dense cable that can allow the 32 again. So you could have another 31 ME drives if you set them up correctly. All located on this side and all the data and information will be passed down this glass cable. So let's try and set one of these up. So let's go ahead and try and set this up working. So over here I've got a power cell, ME drive, just a few items in there, a dense cable and coming out of here I've just got a fluid cable and quartz fiber. Big space in the middle, other side dense cable, crafting terminal, nothing else. Obviously it isn't going to work. So let's go and put a P2P tunnel on this dense cable like so and one on the other end like this as well. And we're kept up in the middle with our fluix. And what we'll see is the device still says offline. So even though you see there's one tiny blue line there, even though it's been powered from the back, you actually have to power it from the front here. So a good way to do this is just simply to get a piece of quartz fibre, place it on the side of your glass cable right here, and a piece of fluix, and eventually it should flick. There you go, online, and you can see it's also the same colour. If you change out your colours of glass cable, the light shown inside the P2P will also change out, which is quite useful when trying to organise it all. So, we can see that this still isn't working. So the thing is though, we need to actually link these two together. In order to do this, we need to get the memory card, which is calculation gold, iron redstone. So first of all, you want to shift and right click, and it should clear all the settings. I'm going to go to the P2P tunnel you want to link from and right click 
sorry, shift right click, successfully save the sense of the card, and then right click on the other one. Make sure you try and right click on this like little coloured square here. Successfully loaded the settings, and we should see. You might see a line up in there. And the crafting terminal device online, and now we can see what's stored in our terminal. If we're going to add another item, you can see that it has added it in there, 0 out of 63. Nice and easy. So over here it's got a bit more complex. I have 32 ME drives all with a, a cell in it. And I've just basically got a dense cable running up through the middle, connecting them all. And then the bottom here as well. On this side it's basically got the same setup, a energy cell, this time ME controller because we're going to be using 32 channels, a crafting terminal which is offline at the moment, and the quartz cable and fibre at the back here. So once again, P2, P2 on, on either and then run your glass cable along clear that successfully save the settings from there and then load them onto there and then we should see it all light up it may take a few seconds no we won't because I haven't given any power yet that is essential and it is something I often forget and you may as well you need to make sure that you power both of these along the glass cable as I mentioned because I've already got this preset up once we add that in, it should flip to life. Aha, beautiful. And you can see that we're optimizing all 32 channels along here and coming in here as well. So along this glass cable, I've got these 32 all running through it and it works just fine. Now on, on the glass cable, because these do count as devices, you can add up to well eight P2Ps if you want to, so you can run off in these directions as long as you have the channels come from a controller, which I'll show you a good way to set it up in a few minutes just to show you that it's all working there. So what I've got here is a 3x3 ME controller with a hole in the middle and on the sides I've used eight different colours of dense cable red, green, brown, yellow, blue, purple, white and black and then what I would normally do is go and build out the ME controller again 3x3 and use the other colours, so like light blue and grey and magenta and the rest. So we can optimise these by putting P2Ps on all of these faces of dense cables, like so. And then that waffle is between every P2P, we'll get a maximum of 32 channels coming out of each one. And then you times it by 8, that's, that's quite a bit of channels really. So you'll notice that these are still offline, so the best way to power it just run your dense cable out like so and then use the same color glass cable as the dense cable running down the middle so in this case I'm using cyan and then when you attach it you'll notice the device becomes online and this color on the P2P also changes to that of the glass cable just going to quickly run this around like so like that so then all you need to remember is when you are connecting up the P2Ps if you run it down like so and then you put one on the other end like that Let's say you want to run red cable like this. Just make it a bit bigger. All you have to remember to do is once again, oops, shift right click. And that will say successfully loaded sense. So you notice that I haven't done any of that quartz fiber business. That's because the, the glass cable is also powering it because the power has come out of the dense cable as well. And you see that those two are linked. So this is really cool and everything. But what if you want to use a system, say, over a hundred blocks, or a thousand blocks, or five thousand blocks, or whatever, or even potentially even maybe different worlds? Well, you can't run gas cables, and it means setting up another ME system. Well, that just sounds like effort, really. So, what we have is the ME quantum linking chamber and ME quantum ring. By by adding a quantum ring onto the side of this, and then run and then setting up another one at our location, we can run cables out and use it as a wireless transmitter from one side to the other and like I said you can run this over huge distances and it's much cheaper than having to set up a whole new ME system so to start with the ME quantum link chamber and to do this you're going to need two so firstly you're going to have to make some fluix pearls which is just fluix dust, fluix ground down, ender pearls and then four of these with four quartz glass give you one of those so that's quite cheap quantum ring though you're going to need 16 of these these come in, start to become expensive so you're going to need two larger processors engineering processor and dense cable 
and you're also going to have to use energy cells. Just grab one of those. So to set it up, you do a three by three ring with the quantum rings, and then add a quantum linking chamber in the middle, and it becomes this multi-block structure. So when we are using this, we can add in here, here, but we can't add into the small bits into the corner. That means you've got four points in which you can add in, and also the back, like so, which is quite cool. So let's say we had one of these temporarily connected onto here. We could then use the cyan cable, run it out, put the PTP, and then we can link it up and it would be able to use that controller through this quantum ring. But before you get started on that, anyway, we have to look at what goes inside here. And we need what are called quantum entangled singularities. These can be a bit of a pain to get your hands on. So you're going to have to make something else, and that's a matter condenser. It's relatively cheap and simple, just a fluid still dying in glass. And I don't think it needs to actually be powered, or even on the ME network for that matter. So in order to acquire a singularity that looks like this, you have to make sure that the setting is on ME condenser, and that's it condensed into singularity. And you can see this takes 256,000 items. With this condenser you can also use it to automatically destroy items or you can convert it all into matter balls which you can actually be used to paint cables onto the down which is quite a useful thing but I'll probably come to, back, come to that in a later episode. So we're going to want the singularity output. And you can see I've added a 64 KME storage component because this is the only component which is large enough to store 256,000 items before the system can convert it into a singularity. So let's say we go and add some items straight in here, which we don't want. You can see it's gone added another 64 on top total, so you need to keep pumping it in. So I'd advise making something like a cobble gen generator or any item that you're having in great abundance that you really don't care about. Also, with the matter condenser, it will keep running. It won't stop at doing a single singularity. So if you don't want to use up all your items, I recommend keeping an eye on it. So here we have the singularity. Let's just grab one. So it looks like so. Now you only need one to get two linked together. So what we have to do, we're going to have to blow it up. <laughs> and for this, you're going to need TNT. I'm just using this tiny TNT which I think is just two pieces of sand and two pieces of um, TNT and also ender dust which is then a pill that has been ground down. Let's just see about that tiny TNT for you. Oops. Yeah, sorry, nether dust or um, so quartz and gunpowder. Right, so let's put that in there and then what you want to want to do is throw your singularity in there. Nice, so throw the singularity in there. I've got the magnetism turned on. Make sure you don't. <laughs> and throw your ender dust in there as well. And give it a light. It should hopefully blow these two together. And there, we've got two quantum entangled singularities. So what I've got done here is made my quantum ring. And on one front I basically put an Emmy crafting terminal, you see nothing in here, a glass cable, and it's been powered because of this is all set up. So on the other side I've just got a creative energy cell and my Emmy controller with our dense green cable run into a P2P. And on it I have an Emmy crafting terminal. You see once again nothing in there. This will be our quantum link chamber that we'll be connecting to. So at the front here once again I've got a glass fluidless cable run into an Emmy drive that has one item in it. I've got our dense green cable going into a glass cable into a P2P tunnel. And the reason you want to probably come st straight out of the quantum ring with the dense cable is that way that you can add on multiple of the glass cables before you max out the channels. You don't want to limit yourself just to eight. So I've gone into another dense cable because this is probably how you would set up your system therefore on. And I've got an ME drive. You can see this is also off as it's no sorry, it's not off. <laughs> it's just not connected to anything. Inside, I've already put our quantum entangled singularity. 
and if we come over to the one and add this in as well they will form a link and you should see those two drivers jumping up so if we have a look at this crafting terminal you can see we've got some glass cable in there now this is only reading remember down this green line that we've already automatically connected so this one will only read what's in that cell this ME drive because the way we've linked it while the purple one isn't really linked to anything specific like this is and we can see that we've just got 13 PTP tunnels in there don't know what happened there thank you mouse so that's a good way really to link up quantum rings back to our ME setup that I was telling you before about the way I do it it's got the cell back, back there and like I said before all the dense cables and whatnot with all the PTP tunnels and what I'm going to do is link it from the dense cable so it doesn't link into the middle I just link it up like that and you can see it becomes active it's got a singularity in that and it's going to link over to this one here and this just comes out so we've got this dense cable so I'm already using eight channels over here because I have eight P2P tunnels. So it means I can have another, do really another eight of these glass cables with P2P tunnels running off it. And then on each one of those, I could have our, our dense cables that are on our control over there. So we're suddenly open to a lot of channels. And once again, the way you need to link this is save the settings um, from where you're coming from. So if we're doing green, um, you just come over, hold your shift, click there, successfully save settings, and click there, and that will load the settings so those two PTPs will connect. Clear it, shift it, click it. So hopefully when we connect up some devices, So hopefully, there you go, we can see that the devices are running through and they should be running into there, like that. So I hope I've given you a bit more insight into how P2P and quantum linking works and also I hope I've cleared up one or two issues if you are having any. As always, comments and likes would be greatly appreciated and I'm hoping to do a next tutorial in to integrate an A2 into other mods, so hope to see you there.